I regret the moment I made the decision to make this cake. I'm really not looking forward to this. <laughs> this week, I made a giant McDonald's apple pie. I could have chosen anything from McDonald's, and this is what I chose. What do you do? Uh, I'm trying to decide what would look the best as cake. <laughs> I love cake. How would you do the inside? I'll put a layer of apple pie there. But this is in it. Yeah, fondant. I had to watch it destroy itself in front of my face. This cake tried to beat me and it might have won. The only thing that bothers me is fondant really should touch it and make that. So you're saying you're gonna basically have to risk it? This is my cake confession. Such a nice ponytail, Leo. At least I know how to make a ponytail. <laughs> That's my next channel, how to ponytail it. It all started on a, I don't remember what day of the week it was. <laughs> Monday morning. I had baked some vanilla spice cakes the night before. And my vanilla spice cake, if you don't know, is basically my ultimate vanilla batter. And then I layer in some of my spice mix into the batter and bake it. It didn't, it wasn't all bad. Halfway through, it was excellent. Uh, we actually have to give them some other information, Jocelyn, because here in Toronto, McDonald's apple pies look a certain way. When I started to look at pictures, I saw versions with a lattice. Jocelyn and I went to a McDonald's, an American McDonald's drive through to purchase an apple pie, which I took across the border. But then who was I talking to? Healthy junk yeah. food said that in Florida, they look like ours. Yeah. I, I'm totally confused. Like, what state are you from? Where are you from? Where in the world are you from? It's McDonald's. And tell me what your apple pie looks like. There's probably, you know what Orhan said? In Turkey, they serve it with ice cream around it. What the heck? They're getting like all this special apple pie treatment. <laughs> now I'm going to layer each cake into two layers. So the cakes I baked are two rectangular cakes, but one is larger than the other because when I worked out how to scale the pie, I needed to be longer than any pen that I own. So I'm, I'm going to line up the cakes, the bigger rectangle and then the smaller rectangle on its side, one long rectangle. I'm happy with the shape of my cake. I'm going to take it apart, lay out all the layers, and with the help of Sir Squeeze, simple syrup them. While my simple syrup is soaking in, I'm gonna take the time to make some cinnamon buttercream because like I said, apple pie makes me think of cinnamon. So cinnamon buttercream it is. I simply just like to stir cinnamon into my Italian meringue buttercream until I like the taste of it. Love it. Now that's a recipe. It's time to fill and stack these cakes with the cinnamon buttercream. And when I do this, I realize I want the cake to be a bit higher. So I'm glad I saved my humps. I'm gonna take those cake humps and you know, trim them up, remove caramelization, and add them to the top just to give my like the base of my apple pie a little more height. Now I'm going to carve this cake to resemble the shape of a McDonald's apple pie, which is basically a rectangle, but then you sort of round down the top edges. You know what I'm saying? And it's sort of like pinched together at the bottom. I like this hand action. So it's very simple carving. Like I said, at this point, I still had hopes and dreams. Once I'm happy, I can crumb coat and chill this entire cake with my cinnamon butter cake. You're gonna notice uh, as this interview goes on, I've been saying, once you're happy, I'm gonna stop saying that at some point in this uh, discussion because I stopped being happy. And I've gone to a cake decorating therapist. I actually think this is a brilliant idea. <laughs> tell us, tell us. Cake decorators need their own therapists. But when you're a cake decorator, you have all these problems that are very specific to cake decorating that no one understands unless they've attempted to do this. Uh, because it's apple pie, I wanted to have apples in this cake because it's apple pie. I mean, it's a pretty logical thought, I think. So I'm just gonna use my rubber spatula to sort of scoop out the sliced apples because they're already cooked, they're already cool, and I will flavor them with a little more cinnamon. So I just, I, I used like 14 cans of apple pie filling. 
I have, I have my cake, I love the shape of it, I have my apples, they look good, they're exactly what I wanna see peering through the lattice. And basically what I've decided to do is place a layer of these apples on top of the cake. So you're not really mounding it, you're just putting one layer across that top portion of cake and this will peek through our fondant later on. Who knew that apple pie filling could destroy fondant as well as my soul? I mean, I know this, here's the thing, I know this. I know that fondant doesn't like moisture. Even if you cover a cake and there's a drop of water, or I remember when I would deliver wedding cakes, I would put like saran wrap all the way around the box if it was raining or snowing, because just one little droplet of snow just starts to eat away at the fondant. But because I sort of went through the process of straining the apples and I didn't really think that they were liquidy, I didn't think it would have the same effect. So what did they do? They did everything to prove me wrong. That's what they did. Now it's time for fondant. I'm going to try and remember I was still happy when I was rolling out this fondant. So I'm going to measure my cake and then roll out my tan fondant a bit bigger than my cake and I have to carefully pick it up on a French rolling pin and unravel it over the cake. Now, instead of what I usually do, which is trim the fondant at the bottom edges, I'm not gonna do that because the pies don't look perfect. So what I'm going to do is fold it under. I don't want perfectly straight lines. I don't want it to look like it came off a machine, even though it probably did. <laughs> I don't think that there's like a McDonald's factory with like a bunch of people just pen making pies. Yeah, I don't. I could be wrong. <laughs> you can correct me if I'm wrong. It is time to paint this cake. Even though I still have to cut the fondant and create the lattice look, I'm using a mixture of ivory. I'll always smile for ivory. Ivory has never let me down, unlike apples. Ivory is greater than apples. Ivory. So I'm gonna use a bit of taupe, which is like a grayish color, just to dull it a little, but you won't even notice. I'm gonna mix it with clear food grade alcohol and then paint it over the entire surface of my fondant so it looks like cooked pastry. I've decided to paint it now, one, because it'll give the paint more time to dry, and two, because I feel like if it's cut open and I paint, a lot of the liquid could sort of fall into the apples. So I'm just gonna paint it. So I'm going to make a template for the lattice. I'm drawing a template freehand, which is always a painful experience for me. And then I'm just gonna lay it on top of my cake and use a sharp paring knife to cut out all the openings. And what's great is, even if you don't follow the template perfectly, it doesn't matter, because it's not about perfect lines. Oh, it's about to get much less perfect. And this, is where it all goes wrong. So before I show you actually, I need you to subscribe to this channel. I need it now more than ever because after 21 years, I'm thinking I might quit cake. No! I, yeah, I need you to keep me, can we make this like a hotline? I wish we could suddenly have everyone here. Like, do you remember that? Remember when people would call in? I need encouragement. So as I peel off the fondant, do you know what I discover? I discover that the apples are melting the fondant from underneath. And there's like this milky liquid that is actually melted fondant on the surface of the apples. And I'm really upset and I think it looks hideous. Why don't we just end the video here? <laughs> you gotta finish it, yo. I don't like reliving this. This is like, it's like I'm on the stand and I'm going through something that happened to me. <laughs> so I peeled it off. At this point, I'm telling myself it's gonna be better. I did, I am glad I saved my paint because I'm gonna paint on the inner edges of the cut because you can see that the fondant is a lighter color than the painted surface. So I'm just gonna touch up the paint here and there. But as I keep going, not only are the apples eating away at the fondant underneath, but now some of the, that liquid is dripping out from the openings. 
So on the apple pie, there's also a little bit of sugar. So because my pie is so large, I'm going to cut some clear rock candy off the sticks and then put it in a bag and like beat it a little with a meat tenderizer and these will be my granulated sugar, which given my mood felt amazing. Um, and then I'll sprinkle, I sprinkled on that coarse sugar. It seems to be mainly along the edges, not right on the top surface of the pie. So I did sprinkle it, but very sparingly. Now, my other solution to hide this like milky liquid was before I was done, I'm just gonna take a few apples here and there and put them in the opening, you know, just to hide some of that liquid and bulk it up. It was a disaster. And before I show you the final product, I refuse to call it cake. Uh, maybe we need some retail therapy. So if you need that, fellow cake decorators, we're having a Black Friday sale at howtocakeit.com. And with this code, you get 20% off. I should have taken 20% of apples off that cake. I should have taken 100% of apples off that cake. Okay. Plus, if you spend $75 or more on Black Friday, you will get access to my live stream baking class on December 14th completely free. That will be our first cake therapy session. We could talk through our cake problems. Like we actually saved the cake overnight for one day. I thought, okay, what if I get it cold enough? That was a terrible decision. Like when I got to the kitchen in the morning and I opened the fridge, there was a puddle below the cake of how much liquid had seeped out one corner. That's how much the apples had eaten it. Apples are vicious. <laughs> a, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Uh, no, 14 cans of apples and now I need a doctor, a psychiatrist mainly. <laughs>